Hello everybody, greetings from Chennai in India. To continue from where I left off last time, on old is gold in dermatology. Perhaps the most ancient drug in medical therapeutics, it still continues to be popular in today's practice, is colchicine. It is an alkaloid from the plant Colchicum autumnale, named for the land Colchis in the eastern tip of the Black Sea. The first accurate description of the plant was given by Dioscorides, an army surgeon in the days of the mad King Nero in the first century AD. Alexander of Tralles used the drug to alleviate pain of articular origin. And since then it was used for this indication for many centuries until in the 13th century it went into oblivion for no apparent reason. But it was resurrected in 1763 by Baron Anton von Stock of Vienna for treating gout. The alkaloid colchicine has a variety of action at the tissue and cellular levels. It is still a favorite amongst the rheumatologists. It has got medical indications like in familial Mediterranean fever, sarcoidosis, pagets, and so on. And in dermatology, there are numerous indications for colchicine. It is my favorite drug for some types of leukocytoclastic vasculitis and palmoplantar pustulosis. I started with the slogan, gold is gold, and conversely, gold is gold in therapeutics. Gold is a popular ingredient of many Siddha preparations in India. It is also a highly touted aphrodisiac, marketed as gold pus pumps. Its value in dermatological therapeutics was first popularized by Penis in uh, 1973 in the treatment of pemphigus. We found intramuscular gold to be very useful in a few cases of childhood pemphigus where the large doses of steroids and immunosuppressive drugs were contraindicated. We published our results in the IJDVL 1992. It was also used for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. There are many other topical remedies in dermatology introduced in ancient times, but we still continue to use them today, like salicylic acid, tar, podophyllin, benzoic acid, and gentian violet. In my undergraduate days in the late 1950s, the only treatment available for oral candidiasis was gentian violet. But from the 1970s onward, we had other drugs coming in, statin, various types of uh, imidazole derivatives, which replaced the gentian violet. Gentian violet was first introduced by Churchman in 1912 for the treatment of skin infections. It has bacteriostatic and bactericidal effect against many gram-negative cocci and also many fungi. In the December issue of the 2000 BJD, there was an article which claimed that topical GV paint was very effective for skin infections against uh, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, including the nasal carriages. Now this, as we all know, is a very troublesome infection which needs powerful, costly, antibiotics. So if this gentian violet would be proved effective, then that will be a great boon in these. Its only drawback is its awful violet color. I'd like to briefly mention a few therapeutic procedures which were the favorite of one age but fell into disrepute in a later era. One such was venesection or bloodletting, which was not only used in Tudor and Victorian medicine, 
But even by Sir William Osler for the treatment of pneumonia during the first decade of the 20th century, which treatment was faithfully followed by his students and uh, disciples until the 1930s, till the introduction of the sulfonamides. The same Osler, who was considered one of the greatest teachers of medicine and a clinician, said, the philosophies of one age have become the absurdities of the next. And the foolishness of yesterday has become the wisdom of tomorrow. The generation which followed Osler, they considered bloodletting as a foolishness and then they gave it up once antibiotics came into the picture. But in 1960, Ippen showed that the treatment of choice for porphyria, cutanea, tarda is venesection. Similarly, in polycythemia, vera rubra, venesection is very useful. So you see the foolishness of yesterday has become the wisdom of tomorrow. In the 60s and 70s, when I was an assistant professor at the Madras Medical College, we used a form of uh, therapy called autohemotherapy, where we used to draw five cc's of blood from the uh, cubital fossa and inject it deep into the gluteal muscle once a week. And it helped in disparate conditions like lichen planus, psoriasis, um, uh, chronic eczema, chronic idiopathic urticaria, and so on. But after the 1970s, the newer generation thought there was no scientific rationale in this treatment and they gave it up. This treatment started originally from Germany. But in the February issue 2003 of the British Journal of Dermatology, there was an article by two authors who claimed that this treatment, they called it autologous blood therapy, was very effective for herpes zoster, atopic dermatitis and chronic idiopathic urticaria. So the foolishness of yesterday has become the wisdom of tomorrow. And lastly, old dermatologists. An old Chinese proverb says, when you drink from the stream, remember the spring. I can recollect two springs in my life. One was Professor Arthur S. Tambaya, my mentor and teacher, Madras Medical College and Dr. Freen Bell, who is considered to be the father of uh, photobiology in Scotland. These two helped me in the formative years of my career. I also remember with gratitude the pioneers of dermatology in our country, Dr. Bell and Dr. Kandari from Delhi, Dr. Sarat Desai of Mumbai, Dr. Banerjee of Calcutta and Dr. Ambadi of Kerala. They were all departed from this world, but their memories will never fade. So I cannot but agree with what Oliver Goldsmith, the famous Irish poet of the 18th century had to say. In She Stoops to Conquer, he says, I love everything that is old, old friends, old times, old manners, old books, and old wine, to which I would like to add, old wives. That is my old wife of more than five decades. <laughs>